Hi, this is Ali Rangel for Game Visuals. What you're going to learn to, in this tutorial today is how to bring an animation from Blender 2.91 into the Godot game engine. Uh, you're going to learn how to set up an animation tree that allows your character to animate through its idle pose. And then when you push a button, you'll activate the animation that you brought in from Blender 2.91. As I work my way through this tutorial, I try to not only explain what I'm doing, but why I'm doing what I'm doing. The mech that you see uh, on the screen now will be provided to you. I'm a 3D modeler, animator, uh, as well as rigger. Uh, I made this mech. After you download the mech, you can use it in whatever projects you would like to use it in. That's fine with me. Uh, thanks for watching this tutorial, and I hope that you enjoy it. When this tutorial goes up, there should be a link in the description that will allow you to download the mech that you see on the screen. Hi, this is Ali Arango of Game Visuals. Today I'm going to show you how to bring animations from Blender 2.91 into the game engine Godot. So let's get started. What you should see on your screen is a time lapse of me setting up an idle animation as well as a walk cycle animation. This time lapse should take about a minute. I wanted to leave this in the tutorial so that if you chose to, you could slow down the video and see how the process of making the idle animation as well as the walk cycle animation uh, is done. Once you have your two animated poses done, you can check them by clicking the uh, it's like a arrow there, so we can see that we have these two poses, which is what we want. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go to the upper left of this screen. We're going to go to the non-linear animation editor, which is this here. So see this idle pose here? This is very important uh, that you do this before you bring these poses into Godot. Here's the idle pose here. What you want to do is go to this button here and select push down action. So I'm going to left click so you can see. Now this has been pushed down, so to say, and here's the pose. So now I want to make sure that I have the walk animation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this arrow here, select walk, when I do that, now we can see here's the uh, walk pose. So I'll do the same thing. I'll go to this push down action button and then select that. So uh, with these two buttons selected, I mean, with these two actions uh, pushed down, we'll be able to see these actions inside of Godot. If you don't push the actions down, you might not be able to see these actions. So I'm going to select here and name this walk. And the reason why I'm doing that is this right here, we can see that the track is named walk, but here now like this idle pose is named NLA track. So we'll select this and rename this to idle pose. Okay, so once we have these named, what we can do is go to layout Okay, I'm gonna select this floor, press X to bring up the delete button, and then choose delete to delete the floor. I just brought the floor in to help with animating. I'm gonna select this camera, press X to delete that. Click here, uh, which was that light to delete that. I uh, selected these just, not just, I selected them because 
I want to only uh, have what I'm bringing into. Into uh, Godot. So I'm selecting the custom shapes here. So I'm going to right click and then I'm going to go to delete hierarchy to delete all of those uh, custom shapes. This cube does not appear to be anything. So I'm going to right click here, then select delete hierarchy. And the reason why I did that is I don't want anything other than what I'm planning on uh, bringing into Godot. So uh, with those other objects deleted, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to File, Export, and then we're going to this GLTF 2.0. And you can see the rest of the information there. So we'll select that. Once we select that, you want to look to the upper right, you'll see this format. We're going to change this to GLTF embedded with this other information here. Uh, the way things are set up is everything that we have in Blender currently is going to move to Godot. Uh, another way, sometimes people will go and select exactly what they want and bring that into Blender. I prefer to uh, kind of do it the opposite and get rid of everything that we don't want to come, and then just let Blender bring everything in. Okay, so once you have this set up, you want to uh, make sure you know where your GL GLTF file is going to go. Uh, this used to take a decent amount of time to do. When I've been working with, when I say this, I'm talking about uh, bringing a, a file out of Blender as a GLTF file. Uh, now this works fairly quickly. So with these default, just that one change, you know, set up and everything else left as default, we're going to select this uh, export GLTF 2.0 button. And just that quick, uh, that export has been done now. Okay, what you're looking at here is actually a thumb drive folder. Uh, Godot does not have to be installed on the system. It can run right from an executable file. So what I'm gonna do is click uh, right here. So here is Godot. Uh, what Godot is, is Godot is a, a, a free open source game engine. It does 2D as well as 3D graphics. Uh, so. What we're going to do to start everything off is we're going to select new project and then we're going to name this Blender to Godot Animation. Once you uh, select a name, you then select create folder. Uh, this, you can click here, this browse button to pick where you want your game to be placed at. I'm fine with this default setting right here. Once this is all done, uh, you can go to create and edit. So here we are at the uh, start off of a brand new file in Godot. Okay, as far as how Godot works up here, is the main menu in Godot. You can switch between 2D as well as 3D. Uh, a lot of times after you've picked your first, you know, whether you're working on a 2D game or a 3D game, uh, a lot of times the main thing you'll go to up here is the script button where you can work with your scripts. Uh, you can get to assets right here using this uh, asset library button. Uh, when you're working in a 3D game, when you're working on UI, you'll oft, often tend to go to 2D to, to make up the UIs uh, in a 2D perspective. If you look to your left, the file system uh, is along here. If you look down, this is the system dock right here. This is where you'll tend to 
you can actually uh, drag assets into here or you'll see your main assets here. When you're working with animations, you'll work with this bottom bar right here. Uh, this bottom section here tends to open up and show you whatever you're you're working on. Uh, this is this uh, doc over here is very important. This is the inspector doc. This is where you work with properties of the different uh, objects that you work at as you work through your game. Uh, when I first started using Godot, I uh, well, actually, when I first came to Godot to use it, uh, I was recommended this by one of the people off of my uh, uh, Blender channel. Uh, I wanted to use Godot for visual scripting. The visual scripting, mm -hmm. I don't think, worked that well. I was very frustrated with Godot, and I was like, I don't like this game engine. Uh, for those of you who know me from my Blender channel, I pretty much, and a similar thing happened to me with Blender. First tried out Blender, did not like Blender. Uh, and then I came back later and I liked Blender a lot. Kind of like the same thing that happened with Godot. Uh, once I came back and started scripting in Godot, I realized that the, the way that you work in Godot as well as the, uh, the scripting was very easy. And now I actually like Godot a lot. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to look to our left and we're going to select 3D Scene. Uh, when I click this, you can see this spatial node here. Uh, the way that things work in Godot is they work by nodes, uh, kind of like a tree. So this is like the, the main root or this is the main root for the, the game. I'm going to click here and then change this to level. So pretty much everything in the game will be connected to this. What we want to do now is we want to make up something for our mech to stand on. Okay, so what we're going to do now is with this level selected, we're going to look to the left, select the plus button, and then we're going to look to this search uh, bar right here. With this search bar, you tend to be able to search for whatever you need. So I'm going to put type in mesh. And what I want is a mesh instance. When you work in Godot, the reddish objects tend to be uh, 3D. The bluish objects tend to be 2D. So I'm going to select this mesh instance and then select Create. Okay, this mesh instance that we added, this will allow us to actually be able to see our 3D shape. Uh, we're going to do that by working with these properties to the right. However, before we do that, we're gonna bring in our, our other objects. So with this mesh instance here selected, we're gonna select the plus button again. And what we wanna do is bring in a static body. So I'll search for static body. You can see this is the reddish color, which is uh, 3D. Working with three, for working with 3D, so we'll select create. So now this uh, little symbol you see here is saying like this wants uh, certain things as well. Uh, and we'll deal with that. However, with this selected, we're going to select the plus button again. And this time we're going to select a collision shape is what we're looking for. So we'll select this. So then we'll select create. So now we have all the objects that we need to make uh, the ground that our mech is going to stand on. So we'll go to the mesh instance. And then with this selected, we'll go to the uh, mesh to the uh, right here. And we're going to select new cube mesh. Okay, so here is our cube. So what we want to do now is we want to work with the uh, the uh, dimensions of this mesh. So we're going to look to where we see this transform here. We'll select the uh, arrows so we can see. So particularly what you want to focus on the scale right here. So for this, what we're going to do is for the X, we're going to change this to 100. For the... Uh, 
why we're actually going to change this to 0 0.5. For the Z, we're actually going to change this to 100 as well. Okay, so now that we have the dimension set up for our, uh, our, gra our ground, we're going to go to static body. Static body deals basically with our physics. Uh, so now what we want to do is we're going to click this transform and we're going to set pretty much do the, the same settings. So we're going to change this to 100 this to 0 0.5. We're going to also change this Z to 100. We're now going to go to the collision shape. And then for the collision shape, uh, Godot wants uh, the shape of the object. So we're going to look to the right. So we see shape. We're going to select here. We're going to select new box shape. And then what we want to do here is we want to go to the transform and then for here things are slightly different when you're working with uh, the collision shape things go from the center of your object out so essentially uh, most of your dimensions are half or so they're half of what they are so for here for the scale for uh, this x we're going to put in 50 For the uh, the Y, we're going to put in the same as before, 0 0.5. For the Z, we're going to put in 50. And that should give us what we need to have our mech be able to stand here. Okay, when we look to the upper left, we can see that our scene hasn't been saved. So we're gonna to go to scene and then save scene. So this wants to, this being Godot, wants to save the scene as level.tscn, which is a standard Godot file. So we'll select save. Okay, uh, as far as in the future, wanting our mech to be able to to move on this area that we made. This can be kind of difficult to see as you're moving because it's a flat color. So we'll add a texture to this. Before we do that, we're gonna set up our folder structure. So we're gonna look to the left here and uh, see where we see this RES, you know, colon slash slash. We can right click here and then we can select open in file manager. And that RES is, is basically how Godot shows you your, your uh, main folder that your Godot work is in. So I'm going to select open and file editor. Okay, so this is the, uh, the folder that opened up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new folder. I'm going to name this scripts. Then I'm going to make another folder. I'm going to name this assets. Okay, here in this assets folder, so I'll double click to go in there, or I did double click to go in there. I'm going to make an art folder. I'll make another folder. And then I'll name this audio. I'm going to double click to go in the art folder. Okay, and here that we're making these folders up for, uh, with the thought of us continuing the, continuing to to work on uh, the work that we're doing here. So I'm gonna select new folder. I'm gonna name this background. This will be enemy. This will be player. 
this will be platforms this will be tile set this will be UI standing for user interface Okay, what you see on the screen now is the open source free program GIMP. Uh, GIMP is very similar to uh, Photoshop. I say that as somebody who's professionally taught the uh, Photoshop as well as most of the Adobe programs. Uh, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna make a, uh, make a texture or make two textures to use. So we're gonna select File, New. For the size, for the width, we're gonna set this to 100. And then the height, we're going to set this to 100. We're going to select OK. And then uh, we're going to go to the lower right. I'm going, to, I'm going to the Create a New Layer button. I'll select that. I'll select OK. So I just made a transparent layer. So what I'm going to do here is with uh, the white color here selected, I have the paintbrush here. I'm gonna hold control then roll my mouse to zoom in. I'm gonna left click then hold shift. When I hold shift, I can draw this straight line across. So I'm gonna left click to put that white line in. I let go of shift. I'm moving up uh, above the square that we see here. I'm left clicking without holding anything. Now I'm holding shift, dragging straight down or somewhat down. I'm gonna left click again so now with this here with this uh square here made i'm going to go to file export as i'm going to export this as a png so i'm select i'm going to search for png so now i'm looking for the folder blender blender to godot animation so we'll go to assets art background so i'll name this uh tile one then select export export good so now what we'll do is we'll make another blank folder Bring this down below these white lines here. And uh, for this, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to change this white color to a bluish color. Select OK. I'm gonna hold Control, then press the comma key. So now I have uh, a similar square, just with a blue background instead of the yellow. I'll go to File export as I'll change this to tell two then select export then export okay I'll select uh, Godot to go back to Godot so when we look in the uh, assets here and what this is, this is basically showing us our the folder that we have our Godot work in. So when I go to art and then background, we can see here are the two tiles that we just made. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go to the right of the screen to where we see material. We're going to click the arrow. We're going to select new spatial node. We're going to click right on the sphere. We're going to go to albedo where we see texture. We're going to select empty go to load and then we're going to go to assets art background we're going to go to this tile 2 and then select open so once this comes in this is spread over the entire uh, piece of geometry so what we want to do to work with that is go to uv1 select the uh, arrow uh, for the scale before previously we had the scale set for 100 0 0.5, 100, because uh, UVs work as if you're working with 2D with X being left to right, Y being up and down. For here, we're gonna put in 100 for the Y as well as 
100 well 100 for the x as well as 100 for the y and then for the the uh, z we're going to put in 0 0.5 then press enter so now this gives us uh something that that as we move over this will be easier to see that we're actually moving uh just thinking about possible work that we would uh might want to do in the future okay what we're going to do now is we're going to work on our player so this is the this is the godot folder that we're currently in so what we're going to do is go to player and what i'm going to do is drag this folder over when i was originally working with the mech file in a in blender when i exported the uh, gltf out there were some hidden objects i went back edit the file and now we have this uh, newer correct uh, gltf so what we're going to do is right click select copy left click right click paste that in i'm going to minimize this folder when i minimize this folder you're going to see this you're going to see uh the godot was importing this into godot there it goes. Okay, so to set up uh, our player, the first thing we're gonna do is go to the upper left, select plus. We're gonna ignore these buttons here. We're gonna go to plus and we're gonna select kinematic body. So we can type in K-I-N-E. The reddish uh, kinematic body is the one that we want because the reddish is uh, 3D where blue is 2D. We'll select create. And then now we have this kinematic body ready to use. So what we want to do is go to our assets folder now, or player. And here we have this uh, GLTF file. So we'll double click this. This message will pop up. We'll select open anyway. And then this is our GLTF file. This mech is super humongous. So we're going to go to scale. Uh, then we're going to select rig mech 2025 green, the, this top right here. We're going to hold shift. And uh, we're going to scale this down. Like that. I let go of shift. We're going to go back to our select node. Now with this scaled down, what we want to do is go to scene, save as scene. And the reason why we want to do this is this will, uh, by saving this, this will, this mech will be saved as a default Godot uh, scene. So now with that done, what we can do is we can close this and then we'll go to our actual Godot file. We'll double click that. We can see that this came in at uh, a much better scale. And you can tell that by looking at the squares compared to the, uh, the mech there. So what we're going to do is we're going to close this. We're going to drag this file towards uh, our kinematic body. We're going to go to, we're going to, well, we're going to select first the mech. And then with that selected, we'll go to transform. We're going to change these uh, translations to zero, zero, as well as zero. And then with that done, what we're going to do is we're going to right click, look for editable children. We'll select that. Uh, and now with this edible children, we select the, we want to select the animation uh, player. We can see here's our idle pose. You want to look to the right, select the button so that the animation loops. So it's the animation looping button. We'll go to walk, select that. Select the animation looping button for that as well. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to click on the uh, kinematic body. And we're going to go to the plus button and we're going to search for animation tree. So we'll select animation tree, select create. Now that we have the animation tree here, uh, what we need to do is look to our right. 
with this animation player. This assign, by the way, the reason why we can assign this is because we went to, we did the editable children. So uh, with the animation tree selected, we'll select the sign. We'll select the animation player of our mech. And then now for this tree root, we're gonna select a new animation node state machine. And then now with this active, we'll select okay. So now what we wanna do is right click, go to add animation, select idle pose, right click, add animation, select walk. Okay, now we want there to be a transition from idle pose to walk. So we'll select this connect node button drag that to there. So I left clicked and dragged. Now I'm clicking and dragging to here. So now we have a translate transition between the two. We're going to go back to our select node. Remember this. Uh, remember that this is currently selected to this next step. You need to go back to your select and move node tool. So now with this selected, we'll look to this X fade time. We'll select this and enter in uh 0 0.4 then press enter and then we'll select the other transition the same thing we'll put in 0 0.4 then press enter we also can click play and we'll see our poses it's like we can see our our walk pose there uh which is good Okay, so now that we have that set up, what we want to do is select the kinematic body, and then we're going to go to the plus button, and we're going to add a collision shape. So we want the collision shape. Remember, the reddish color is 3D, the bluish is 2D. So we'll select this. So we have our uh, collision shape. We want to go, well, we have it on. Now we need to actually define the shape by looking to the right. We'll select capsule. Now we're going to go to transform. Then for the rotation X, we want to turn this to 90. Now we're going to select right on the word capsule shape. And then uh, we'll increase this height some. I'm not sure why it's, it's increasing that much. So now with this capsule height change or the capsule shape, we can push this down. We're pushing this down so that our mech will know where the bottom of it is at. So the height we can actually Take that down. That looks good. Okay, we're going to go to scene. Actually, before doing that, we're going to go to kinematic body, double click this. We're going to rename this player. Now we'll go to scene, save scene as player we'll also go to this level scene save as a uh, level okay so what we're going to want to do now is with the player selected we're going to go to this script button here to add a script we'll leave this script uh the settings here default then we'll select create so now that when we did that that brought us into Godot script editor okay here in the script editor I deleted out the other code except for this top line what I'm going to do is paste the code in and then explain to you basically what the code is doing this line of code right here uh, lets you see this variable outside of uh, Godot. This right here, uh, this line of code let's connects you, connects the, connects the animation tree 
to the uh, code. This line of code here runs a loop where things run at 60 frames a second in this loop. This is this line of code sets up the uh, action press. So if you press up, then this anim tree connects connects the code to the pose walk. Uh, and then if this isn't pressed, then the this line of code this line of code connects uh, the script to the uh, idle pose. So if you're not pressing anything, the the game back goes back to the idle pose. There is something I just remembered. Uh, I'm gonna go to this 3D view here. See this idle pose? We want this to be where the code starts. So with this selected. We'll go to this button right here, which says toggle autoplay this animation on start. So this, this basically makes it so that everything starts with this piece of code here. And you can see that start now there. Okay, what we're going to do now is go to the level. We're going to make sure we select level and then uh, with this level selected we're going to go to the chain and then we're going to select we're going to select player And then we can see here is our mech right here. Okay, what we want to do now is go back to our player tab, select player, and there at the top. Then when we see animation tree, we want to select assign animation tree, then select OK. We're going to go back to, well, let's go to scene, save scene. We're going to go back to level now. Okay, here in the level, what we want to do is select level, select plus. We're going to search for a camera. So we want the reddish camera because our the reddish is 3D, the blue is 2D. We'll select create. So we have our camera here. If we want to see a preview of what we what of what we're looking at, we can select this preview button and we can see right there. So we'll take this up some. I'm rolling the mouse wheel to zoom back. Aim it down some. Back some more. Up some more. Okay. Okay, with the camera set up, what we should be able to do is go to the preview button. So we can see our mech there. So when we push the plus button, see how that stops? Then we go back, uh, we let go, goes back to the idle. What we want is when we push the, not the plus button, but the up button is for the mech to continue walking, which it's not doing. So what you can do to fix that is we're going to click on player. We're going to click on where we see rigged mech. I'm going to left click here, then right click. And what I want to do is go to where I see make local. So I'm going to left click there. So now when I go back to level and then I click the preview button, now when I push forward our mech continues to walk and then when I let go it goes back to its idle pose okay so now you know how to bring an animation from blender into Godot as well as to as how to have a animation activate once you press a button Okay, that's it for the tutorial. Uh, it's been a while since I made a tutorial. I'm hoping to get back and to continue to make tutorials on a more regular basis. 
Uh, for all of those of you out there who like the videos on this channel, we share them. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. And for those of you who are new to this channel, if you like the videos on this channel, you would like to see more, please subscribe and thank you for viewing.